I'm hiding behind an engine. Well, it's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. And I'm hiding behind this. You can't um, help hide behind it. It's big. Believe it or not, we're still doing O-scale models. And we've been doing those now for a few weeks on our little treatise here on scales and gauges. And you're going to say, well, that's not an O-scale model. Oh, heavens, no. No, it's, it's not. And, and this isn't an O-scale model either. But there's a, there's a point that needs to be made here. Because two weeks ago, we talked about how in the O-scale community, the Europeans very early on decided to start doing their O-scale in 1 45th scale. The standard that had been decided by the Society of Model Engineers was 1 48th scale, 1 quarter inch scale. And the Americans have followed that, and that was always considered to be O scale. But the Europeans switched to 45 scale to make the models ever so slightly bigger so that the gauge was a correct four feet, eight and a half inches. So that's, they called that SMO, scale modified O scale. Changing the scale to bring the gauge correct. Is that confusing? Yeah, it's confusing. But in, in America, 48 scale was O scale and five foot gauge, therefore one and a quarter inches. That was just the way everybody did it. They decided to do 1 45th scale to bring the gauge correct. Right. Hope that makes sense. Then at some point in time, they changed to 143.5 scale. And there's been all kinds of people, including myself, who mm. go, why in the heck mm -hmm. did the Europeans switch to 143.5 scale? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, we need to discuss very briefly how model locomotives are made, especially how they were made back then. Right. Okay, so let's say you want to make an HO scale model. This first one here is uh, a River Rossi uh, Virginian Truckee Genoa. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, if you're going to do a, a 187th scale HO scale model, this was tooled on a machine called a reduction pantograph. Right. Okay, it's a big milling machine, this mm -hmm. big, huge milling machine that carves the injection molds that are going to be used for the, the plastic. Right. And then the reduction pantograph is this milling machine that has a milling head at one end and a stylus at the other end, and you can set the stylus on a pattern, and as you run the stylus around on the pattern, the milling head is going to go up and down and all around, and it's going to carve the mold. And because the thing is a teeter-totter, every time the stylus goes up, the milling head goes down, mm. therefore making a negative of the pattern, thereby making a mold a that mold. you can inject plastic into. Oh, neat. Okay? Wow. All right. So if you're going to make a 187th scale model what size to make the oversized model. Mm. And the determination was to make it in 129th scale. Right. This is a 129th scale locomotive. So the pattern model for this little guy here was this big. Wow. Think how neat that looked. Oh, that no. Big. And, and these pattern models were all built out of wood and mm. strips of metal and everything all kind of glued together. Mm -hmm. Let me show you how that works on my calculator here. So if I enter in 29th scale, okay, times 3. 87th scale. Right. Okay, so I just set up my pantograph to a factor of three. Mm -hmm. This becomes this. Oh. Okay. And the machinist that did this was Arnaldo Pocher. Wow. Of Riverossi. And he went on to make the neatest model cars and stuff. But oh, anyway, right. the company was Riverossi in Italy that made these guys. And they had this notion that they also wanted to make the exact same engines in O scale. Ah. O scale, which was very popular in the 1950s. Two rail O scale. Mm. 
So, well, if they set up their pantograph at a factor of three to make this, what would they do? And I started playing around with some numbers and it's like, okay, if I take my 29th scale mm -hmm. times 1.5, 43.5. Well, there it is. And that's where 43.5 came from. Mm. It's because of this manufacturing process right. that they were doing ah. in order to make this into this on the pantograph by setting the pantograph up to 1.5 instead of 3, mm. it made this. Oh, my word. And that's how these two guys were made. And somewhere the, the uh, River Aussie company had all of these huge 29th scale pattern models mm. that made all of these. That's pretty neat. And then along came Jonathan Polk mm -hmm. of Polk's Hobbies right toward the end of the 1990s, and he approached River Rossi and said, can I buy all those pattern models? Because <laughs> I want to get into large scale. I have a plan. I have a plan. So he set his pantograph up at one to one. Oh. And here's one of his models. Wow. So this is a River Rossi HO scale model. Some, if you find it, it's a it's an FA1. Mm -hmm. And the, the HO looks this size. This is what it looked like when they set the pantograph up at one to one. Oh my goodness. And he put this guy on the market and of course I had to run out and buy one. I don't blame you, it's a beautiful <laughs> engine. But it created a whole new category of models for 129th scale, which is still very popular. And to this day, people scratch their heads and they go, scale. why 129th scale? Well, for the same reason of the other scratch your head, 143.5 scale. It was always to make HO scale, which was the most popular mm -hmm. size. Is all of that confusing? It's very confusing. I still go like, <laughs> if you like the train, buy it. If it fits the track, <laughs> away you go. But this this actually explains two of these weird uh, anomalous scales, 129th scale and 143.5 uh, yeah. scale. It, it's a, a train nerd heaven. It's train nerd heaven. Yeah. And and it's and it's math. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> See, boys and girls, now See, pay attention to your teachers in school. Yeah, because otherwise you won't be able to play with model you, you trains. You won't have any idea. You'll buy this train to go on your HO. And yeah, why and, it and someone will tell you this is an HO scale model, and it's uh -huh. like, and on some only weird... at Christmas, <laughs> only at Christmas, ho ho ho, ho ho ho. <laughs> Well, anyway, hopefully this has made some degree. Hopefully. Go back and watch it again, and on about the third viewing, maybe it'll make sense. It might make sense, yeah, with us and, too. I mean, we, and, we, we watch and, our own and selves. And maybe it won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, uh, if you haven't been over to the channel, and if you're not, oh, let's hope a member. If you want to be a member and financially support the channel, you can go to the channel page and click on the Join button. Right. But it, if you're watching these and you're not a subscriber, then please subscribe. That doesn't, that cost, doesn't cost a darn thing. Mm -hmm. And it helps out everybody, mm -hmm. uh, including Santa Claus, who keeps track of our subscriber list. That's so, right, Nadia and I. So if you want to be a subscriber, all you have to do is click on the upcoming blue button. Are we ready for that? Zoink. Right there, the blue button. Right. <laughs> We're not sure how you found this confusing video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Sunday. Right. With some of that foolishness. Mm -hmm. we'll see you then. We'll see you. Bye-bye.